Hi, and welcome to the video where we will discuss pulmonary thromboembolism. And just to review here that an embolism, like we talked about in the uh, previous video, uh, an embolism is a blood clot. It can be in the arterial side of the circulation or it can be on the venous side of the circulation. If the blood clot, if the blood clot is in the vein and it will come up and if it gets lodged like a little piece or a fragment breaks off of the thrombus then that is called an emboli or an embolism and the emboli will the the fraction of the blood clot that broke off will come up through the heart through the right ventricle up into the pulmonary arteries and it will go to the lungs and in this case because you have capillaries here so you have the artery coming here and you have a little capillary here and then it will come back down to through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and then the left ventricle will then pump the blood outside the aorta it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so what will happen is this blood clot uh, the, th the emboli the piece of the blood clot that broke off then will get lodged inside these pulmonary arteries and that is what a pulmonary thromboembolism is. You know, the incident of pulmonary thromboembolisms is there's 20, there's 20 to 25 in every 100,000 hospitalized patients. 200,000 deaths per year in the United States are caused from pulmonary thromboembolisms. 95% of these cases come from the deep vein, deep leg vein throm thrombi above the knee. Now this is interesting that above the knee, and then the, these statistics and data is coming from page 99 of Robin's Basic Pathology, 9th edition, is, you know, in when you, I don't know if you've noticed, but in sometimes in hospitals, they, they put on, when you're laying down, they'll put on these compression devices on your, on your leg, your lower leg, below the knee. And they'll, there's a pump that comes on, it comes back off, and it squeezes. It's supposed to help prevent these deep leg um, throm, uh, blood clots. But 95% of the cases come from above the knee. Above the knee, which they don't put on. So some patients they do, but the majority of them they don't put on above the knee. So there might be needing a change in that if uh, basics, if this Robin's basic pathology uh, text is correct. Anywho, um, so what happens is that in the case of, and I, this is kind of a cross section, this is taken from the, the basics pathology textbook here, and this is what they call a saddle emboli. And you can kind of see here that the blood clot was coming down, was coming down this artery, it kind of folds over to uh, like uh, a branch in the artery. It kind of folds over and it's called a saddle emboli. And, and that's what kind of a saddle emboli is. And, and we'll talk about this later. Well, let's just talk about it later. Now, in the case of a, paradoxa, a paradoxal embolism, now you have kind of, let me go back to this picture over here. So you have, um, there's defects inside, there, you know, some people are born with defects, and there might be a hole here in this, in the hole in the heart, a lot of you, I don't know if you noticed, but people will have holes in their hearts, and what that means is that there's a hole in between the septum here, this septum, or this uh, piece of tissue that's dividing the right ventricle from the left ventricle, there might be a hole here. So when this right ventricle contracts, instead of squeezing blood up into the pulmonary arteries to go to the lung to get oxygenated and then come back with oxygenated blood into the left side of the heart, this, this blood will get shunted over into this oxygenated part of the heart and then will get shipped out into the systemic circulation. So you can imagine if there was a blood clot here, change colors here, if there's a blood clot here and it gets kind of sent up through here and it comes up into the right atrium and then into the right ventricle, it bypasses the pulmonary or the uh, the lung circulation and it will get shipped over 
into the left ventricle and then out the out the aorta and so the that might clog somewhere on the systemic side of of the body you can also have a hole in your heart inside the atriums between the right and left atrium so that is what is called a paradoxical paradoxal embolism so most pulmonary emboli either between 60 to 80 percent are clinically silent because they're too small so you know when you have in your leg you know this is someone's leg here this is their knee and because most of them happen above the knee you know you have some kind of uh, blood clot here well there's little pieces that that might be breaking off and these little pieces when they come up in here into your lungs they might kind of squeeze through here they might kind of just bypass and they might just get lodged in one of these smaller vessels down here and yeah it's cutting off blood supply or you know it, the that blood is not necessarily reaching in, in the tissues the alveoli or the small little air sacs where oxygen exchange happens inside the lungs that's not reaching there so that might be blocking a little bit of it but that's just a really small portion of your whole blood circulation into your lungs and they say that you can have let me scroll down here they say you can have about 60 percent 60 percent of your total pulmonary circulation needs to be blocked before there's sudden death or there's other problems that arise so 40 percent of your pulmonary circulation can be blocked before you know sudden death or you die and there might be you know 10 percent or 20 percent or 30 percent that you'll start having problems um, you can have hypertension uh, hyper, that's kind of the acronym for hypertension but you can have pulmonary hypertension and usually the blood that circulates through the lungs it flows very easy and you can imagine here if I go back over to this video that the right side of this heart is pumping blood just up to the lungs both sides of your lungs and because the heart is relatively close to your extremely close rather to your lungs both of them it doesn't need to pump that much you know it's not this is not like a huge load it is a load but it's not as a, as bad of a load as the left side of the heart the left side of the heart has to pump blood to every part of your body your head your fingers your toes so the left side of your heart has a greater job to do than the right side of your heart so this when you get pulmonary hypertension when you this pulmonary circulation the blood from this point to this point it becomes sluggish or it becomes hard for your right side of your heart to pump that then that can cause problems and one of the causes of pulmonary hypertension is you start getting you start getting all these little emboli all these little pieces of blood clot here start backing up and it, and it can increase the viscosity and cause the pumping it can cause pulmonary hypertension and because these little blood clots, these chunks of blood clots that are breaking up and traveling up to the lungs, because they're kind of stacking up, you might not see any clinical symptoms until you get, you know, up to this 60 to 80 percent because you, you, you might not see any, any, you know, difficulty breathing or anything like that because it hasn't reached that kind of critical point yet. Another thing is, is these things kind of stack up you know they're 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 coming from somewhere and so when people have pulmonary embolism embolisms or blood clots in the lungs they're at a higher risk to get more 